In this video, we introduce the Hall effect qualitatively, we derive a formula for the Hall voltage, and we apply the formula to a simple example. So what we're looking at in this picture is a flat and wide conductor with diameter D, and there's a current flowing from left to right in this conductor, and there's a magnetic field across the conductor going into the page, so that's what all the X's mean. Now recall that if a current is moving to the right in a conductor, what's actually happening is that electrons are moving to the left through the conductor with an average velocity that we call the electron drift velocity. And I'll post a link real quick to the video where this was first introduced. So all of these moving electrons in a magnetic field are going to experience a magnetic force. And the way we figure out the direction of that force is to put our fingers in the direction of the velocity, sweep our fingers out to the direction of the magnetic field, and the direction your thumb must be pointing in to get that done is the direction of the magnetic force on a positive charge. So as you can see, our thumb ends up pointing down, but these electrons are negative charges, so we then reverse that result and we get an upward magnetic force on the electrons. All of the electrons are going to feel varying magnetic forces depending on their specific velocity, but we're just looking at the average drift velocity to determine this, and I'm only gonna label the forces on one electron but we can agree all the electrons are experiencing magnetic forces. Now recall that the magnitude of that magnetic force is given by the Lorentz force law, and I'll post a link real quick to where that was first introduced. And the theta in the Lorentz force law is the angle between the velocity vector and the magnetic field. And that's 90 degrees here, so the sine of theta is gonna be one, and I have a magnetic force of QVB. So because all these electrons are feeling an upward force, what happens is I end up with an excess of electrons gathering on the upper edge of my conductor. But that means there must be a deficit of electrons on the lower edge of my conductor. And it's this charge separation that makes it so we can measure a voltage now across the width of our conductor, and that's called the Hall voltage. To get a handle on the magnitude of the Hall voltage, I realize that this charge separation induces an upward electric field across the conductor. That upward electric field exerts a downward force on the electron that we're focused on, and I'll call that Fe. And the separation of charge is going to stabilize once the electric and magnetic forces are equal to each other. So that's how we get a handle on this. Fb is equal to Fe. And the strength of our magnetic force is given by the size of the charge, that's the elementary charge for the electrons, times their average speed, which is the electron drift velocity times the magnetic field strength. And our electric force is given by the magnitude of the charge, that's the elementary charge for the electrons, times the strength of the electric field. Now I recall that when I have a constant electric field, there's a relationship between the voltage and the distance between the two edges and the electric field. And I'll post a link to where this was derived, but the electric field is going to be V over D. Let's cancel our charges. In solving for the Hall voltage here, I arrive at a simple formula for the induced voltage across this conductor in terms of the drift velocity, magnetic field, and width of the conductor. The way this is used in my teaching lab is that we have a whole drawer of these Hall probes. And these are magnetic field probes. You can go up to a solenoid, for example, and measure the strength of the magnetic field. So to get a sense for how this works, I'm given that a current carrying conductor has a diameter of 2.1 millimeters. I'm given that the electron drift velocity is 0 0.30 millimeters per second. So remember the drift velocity for a conductor, it depends on the geometry of the conductor, it depends on how much current's going through it, and it depends on the material that it's made of. So in order to calibrate this device, you would have to figure out what the drift velocity is depending on how much current is going through it. And this has been done by the manufacturer in advance. And we're told a Hall voltage of 0 0.05 millivolts has been induced when the conductor is placed at right angles to the magnetic field. In other words, just like the picture where we just worked out the formula. And we just want the strength of the magnetic field here. And I'm just going to solve our Hall voltage formula for B. This is really just a plug and chug kind of problem. But I wanted to illustrate how a magnetic field probe is constructed. I have a Hall voltage of 0 0.05 millivolts. So I'll throw in three extra zeros to convert to volts. Our drift velocity is given in millimeters per second, so I'll just throw some zeros on that. So 0003 meters per second. And the width of our conductor was given as 2.1 millimeters, so 0 0.0021 meters. 
and I end up with a magnetic field to three sig figs of 79.4 Teslas, which is absolutely enormous, but not impossible. If you find the physics content on Zach's lab helpful, click on the Zach's lab logo on the right to browse playlists and subscribe to the channel. I produce over 100 new videos per month, and subscribing is the easiest way to find new content. Thanks for watching.